Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. When we put the paint in, we didn't want to get the pallets and the parking lot all messy, so we decided to put cardboard under it, under the balloons, and gradually we decided to put watercolor paper. See how a group of innovative students figured out how to turn archery into art. Discover a legendary rock in Waimea on Hawaii Island, which some believe saved the area from a devastating drought. Learn how a young poet uses creativity to battle depression. Explore a martial arts dojo that is also a place of worship. Learn how to nurse a lost bird back to health. Meet a cultural treasure who has dedicated her life to keeping Japanese traditions alive in her community and listen in on the inner thoughts of a young filmmaker. All in this episode of Hiki No, coming to you from the town of Makuau and the students at Montessori School in Maui, home of the Mustangs. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do. Aloha, we are here in the town of Makuau at the Montessori School of Maui. Montessori schools around the world are student-centered, so everyone learns at their own pace. Materials are used to guide their learning. For example, sandpaper letters are letters written on sandpaper for younger children to trace and learn the shape. Classrooms have mixed grades. Younger students can go to older ones with a question, and older students get to practice being class leaders. This helps them develop leadership skills and independence. Our first story takes us to the island of Kauai, where students at Ke Kula and Ihao or Ke Kaha Public Charter School make a very convincing case for the old saying, necessity is the mother of invention. In December 2016, Ke Kula and Ihao Ke Kaha became the first school on Kauai to join the National Archery in the Schools Program. That's NASP, or NAS for short. The National Archery in the Schools program has more than 9,000 participating schools in the U.S. and around the world. The program follows international style target archery and uses standardized equipment throughout. Over Christmas break, with the help of students and staff, the school built an archery range to NAS specifications. By April 2017, the high school archery team was ready to compete in its first NAS state tournament. Kikula Niao Kikaos Pookumu tells us more about the archery program. The idea of the National Archery and the Schools program started out as a high school program. There was immediate interest by other grades. Uh, from there, we decided to include our middle school students. In the winter of 2018, we then opened up as an elective offering uh, of archery for our grades K-5. to And the interest doesn't stop there. Uh, community interest grew as well, and we have established quarterly community archery days. Kumu Jim took us through uh, all of the steps necessary to participate just as he did with all the students. How did art find its way into the archery program? The Arch is the Art program began when we started shooting at balloons. We found out that the wind blew the balloons too much so we added water into them and we decided that we should take a spin on things and add paint into it. When we put the paint in we didn't want to get the pallets and the parking lot all messy, so we decided to put cardboard under it, under the balloons, and gradually we decided to put watercolor paper. I decided to make a game out of shooting the balloons. Whoever shoots three, the, the balloon three times out of the five times is the winner. Ready, ready. Three, two, one, shoot. 
art. This is Keala Kanahele from Kekula Ni Hao Kekaha on Kauai for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. Our next story takes us to the Waimea area of Hawaii Island, where students at Hawaii Preparatory Academy Middle School introduce us to a legendary rock that is said to possess special powers. to believe. You have to believe and you have to trust that the ways of an ancient people that were here before you and were passed down to you are upright and true. Well, in a hidden place in the small town of Waimea on the Big Island, a legendary pohaku or rock by the name of Mana Ua was a savior for many people in their times of need and despair. Many Hawaiian people believe that Mauna Ua can provide a safe haven for them to practice their culture and to perpetuate what they believe in. Aloha mai kako o pua keis ko uinoa o mauna awa kea ku mauna o keia o mana ua ka pohaku o ka ua o waimea. My name is Pua Case. I am born and raised here in this community of Waimea. This is my Onehanao, my birthplace. Mauna Kea is my mountain. And I am standing in front of Mana Ua, the rain rock of Waimea. Mana Ua got its name from the mo'o, or lizard, that lives in Kohaku House Stream, that sunbathes on this pohaku with her family. There are those who still can see them. And so when we come here, th those who can see them will say, oh, Mana Ua is here. It is said that Mana Ua has the gift to bring water to Waimea in times of need. When my father was in charge of water for the entire ranch, you know, we went through a really, really severe drought in 1978 and 1979 where we didn't have any more water. If you can even believe that in a community here in Hawaii where the only water you have is coming out of one spigot at Church Row. Many people, like Pua Case, believe that Mana Ua is the one responsible for bringing Waimea out of the drought and turning it into what you see today. It is a place that we treasure, that is alive with the prayer and the offerings, and it is something that we can teach our children. So we made a promise in this community that we hope to keep. And we've been doing it for years where every student in every school learns about Mana Ua. By learning the story of Mana Ua, the community and students are helping preserve the story of Waimea. Wherever I am, I am at the sacred places between Mana Ua and Mauna Kea lies Waimea. This is Jane Grace Kuti from Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Hikino. We're back at the Montessori School of Maui. At the top of a hill on our nine acre campus is the Peace Garden. It was built for students to have a calm place in nature and a nice spot to take a break from their work or bring work outside the classroom. It is split into three sections. Each section is intended for different grade levels, but everyone is welcome anywhere. We take you now to the Garden Isle, where students at Kauai High School tell the story of a young poet who uses his art as a way of coping with depression. Time rolls by, but us as humans never stop and realize that our lives are lives built up inside, waiting to truly come alive. Poetry to me is an outlet. I love to write and I love to just be able to express myself within writing. Kauai High School senior Dallas Albao uses poetry to cope with a personal struggle. I had to go through depression throughout five years and 
Um, things are always feeling like they're harder than they should be. Like, let's just say your average late assignment. It's me letting down the teachers, my family, my friends, and then I'll pile on all this stuff which makes everything much, much worse. I focus on others more than I ever focus on myself. The way I overcome all of this dilemma would be through poetry. Being able to tell them how it is I'm feeling and throughout all of my time I've always looked for someone that can understand what it is I feel. Just as, you know, weightlifting is an outlet to me, um, all this stuff, it's a way for me to just share my heart out, share all that I'm feeling, my, just every last bit of me, I get to share all within one story. For Dallas, media class has inspired and generated a new level of poetry. Recently, I just did the Alolo video. I made sure I took a video of something that really connects to me and will be representative of what it is I'm trying to tell. So what I chose was the moon. Lighters and gas burning, all that stand. Take into mind I'm a nice guy doing nice things at the wrong time. Everyone here sees me as a clown but never bothered to see what's behind this mask of So there's Too times where you'll see too. that full moon glisten within the sky and it'll always be there and it'll always lighten your way. But then there's times where the clouds will roll in and the light will kind of get blurred but you can still see the light. Dallas says his own life has been much brighter these days. Lately, I've been a lot happier. When I'm talking to one of my friends, um, I'll be talking to them and we'll be having all these different laughs and it's something that I can feel happy about. That at least I'm getting to do something for them that they get to live a little happier within their days. Through the tough times in life, Dallas hopes that his words can help and inspire others. What I plan on doing is hopefully going to school or just traveling the world, sharing my story or telling a tale for people to connect with and grow with. This is Tiffany Segucio from Kauai High School for Hikino. Now from the Hikino archives. Here's another story about using self-expression to deal with mental health issues. I actually used to self-harm myself. I got it right there on my left arm so that every time I have the feeling of hurting myself, I can look at it and it'll remind myself to stay strong. For 18-year-old Kahului resident Kavena Kekueba, her floral tattoo serves as a reminder of her self-inflicted cuts and the person she once was. There were so many things that went wrong during 2018, and I, I honestly thought I couldn't take it anymore. I did a lot of things that I wasn't proud about. When I finally hit my lowest point, it was eye-opening to me. <laughs> Cause none of it was ever worth the risk. I finally admitted to myself that I have a mental health problem and I finally wanted to get better. Getting better took many creative forms for Kavena. The first step to getting over your ex is to get rid of everything that reminds you of them. YouTube has definitely given me that voice that I thought I would never have. It's given me an outlet where I could actually speak my mind and I've spent almost all of my life caring about what other people thought and I have gotten to the point where in my life where I don't care what other people say anymore. I just keep doing the things I love to do. That's all that matters. A healthy network of friends has also served as a catalyst for change. This was a letter from one of my best friends on my 18th birthday. I really wish for you to be happy, Kvenna, whatever it takes. I will help you through it. Now I know that I'm never truly alone. I know there's someone I can always turn to and that gives me satisfaction and just hope. Now, Kavena's hope thrives in the videos she creates. I really love having my short hair. And her friends Bye. and the life that she lives today. This is Joshua Lee from Maui High School for Hikino. If you or someone you know is dealing with urges to self-harm, you can find help at www.crisistextline.org slash self-harm. We're back in Makawao at the Montessori School of Maui. School can be tough. Students sometimes fear not completing their work on time. 
but mindfulness can help students with this issue. Mindfulness is a practice used to calm down and clear the mind, to decrease stress and anxiety. We do mindfulness by sitting on cushions with good posture and legs crossed. We warm up by stretching and doing a self-awareness check-in. Then we do five to 10 minutes of guided breathing exercise while listening to soft meditation music. Three ohms close the session. We remain on the Valley Isle for a story from students at Kamehameha Schools, Maui Middle School, about a special place where self-defense and worship come together under one roof. CJ Reyes has two loves, jiu-jitsu and sharing his faith in God. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for, for seven years, and I've been teaching uh, the martial art for four years. It's been making a big impact, especially on some of the kids. But CJ and his group not only work on the motor skills of their students, they also work on their spiritual side as well. What we do is we share devotions before our classes and throughout different events that we have going on. I've been using that to, as a platform to share God's love and God's truth with my community. And thus the name of their program, New Creation Jiu-Jitsu was born. So our program, uh, New Creation Jiu-Jitsu, is founded on the scripture 2 Corinthians 5.17, which says, for anyone who is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Uh, behold, all things have become new. His drive to help others wasn't always his goal. But this local boy from Moloka'i was inspired by a childhood angel who changed his life forever. I was growing up, there was this lady, she came from, uh, I think it was California, I believe. And she would come at summertime to do activities with the kids, and, and the kids would just love her. She would um, write down our, our, her birthdays, and she would send a dollar to, to each of the kids. And can you imagine a dollar? It's like about 100 bucks, maybe, if anything. <laughs> it's a lot of money. But she would do that out of the kindness of her heart. And to me, that was really big. So when I gave my life to the Lord, God reminded me of that time. And so that's why using jujitsu to share about Him. This woman and her scriptures motivated him to create his own acronym that mirrors his beliefs. We have a saying in New Creation Jiu Jitsu, it's called RO, and it stands for Respect, Order, Leadership, and Love. In Jiu Jitsu, we RO, so meaning we shake hands and we actively practice these, these moves that, that we learn. And it's also our pillar, our four pillars which we use in our, in our program to help people to remember what we're all about. The Reyes family hopes that in the future, their program will grow. We would really love to see New Creation have its own home, a building where we could say, okay, this is New Creation Jiu Jitsu. And um, our heart and our desire is to reach out to our community. So we get connections all different areas and um, it's just a matter of time where the Lord is gonna take us there to share this program with with other people. This is Riley Rosenthal from Kamehameha Schools Maui for Hikino. And now, from students at Iao School in Wailuku, Maui, here's a how-to video that will make St. Francis of Assisi very proud. In the springtime, it's common to come across a baby bird while having a stroll in the park. Baby birds will develop in the months of mid-April through September. If you happen to come across an abandoned baby bird, here are some easy steps to help you take care of it. First, check the bird for any injuries. Make sure there isn't any blood or other wounds. If there is, carefully bring it to a vet or the Humane Society. Next, determine if the bird is a hatchling, nestling, or fledgling. A hatchling hasn't opened its eyes yet and hasn't developed any feathers. A nestling has its eyes open, but has very few tube-like feathers. A fledgling is fully feathered and can walk, hop, and flutter. It cannot fully fly yet. Knowing the age of the bird is important, so you give it the appropriate food. After you have determined if the bird is a hatchling, nestling, or a fledgling, carefully place the bird in a container with air holes to take it home. Make sure to have a home ready for the baby bird. You can use a wide variety of materials. Just double check that the bird has enough room to move around and breathe. You can create your own nest with old cut grass and a bowl. The home should be enclosed so the bird doesn't escape. Go to your local pet store to buy baby bird food. 
Make sure to follow the directions on the package. Use a syringe to feed the bird. Remember to feed it until it refuses to eat. Feed the bird every two to three hours. Once the bird is fully fledged, you can start feeding it mealworms. When your bird is ready to be freed and can fly, release your feathery friend back into the wild. This is Penelope Dolan from Iao School for Hiki No. We take you now to the Kalihi District of Oahu, where students at Farrington High School introduce us to a graduate from the class of 1962 who continues to keep the Japanese culture alive in her community. Enter to learn, go forth to serve. Betty Santoki, born in Japan, raised in Hawaii, always had a heart for her community. Graduated from Franklin High School, class of 1962, and with the motto, enter to learn, go forth to serve, which she still abides by to this day. She has helped her community through the teaching of the Japanese culture. So when I came to Hawaii, uh, I was enrolled in a school, and there was no ESL at that time. <laughs> so I was, I was put into a classroom and expected to do uh, learn as the other students. Well, I was very fortunate because the, the teacher I had in first grade knew some Japanese, so it made it much easier for me. I grew up in a Japanese family environment, so of course it was respect, respect for elders. Um, it's uh, oyakoko, it's been filial piety to serve, uh, to serve and help your parents. Um, and ong, which is like obligation to others who have helped you. So you should have uh, a return kind of feeling to help them. And I think this is the way I can serve the community. For the past six years, she has been teaching Japanese conversation classes at the Newtown Community Center to interested seniors with the intent of connecting them to their roots, to give them a sense of on so they appreciate the sacrifices their ancestors made for them. Seniors in the class, you know, we, we travel a lot to Japan, so we really benefited from her teaching us. We don't know our ancestors, our family, you know, in Japan. So through Betty, you know, she's able to write letters and converse in Japanese, so she's helping us to make connections. A few months ago, Betty had a, had a heart surgery, and so this was, in April, April, May, and so, but in the fall, she still had a class. Of course, you know, we helped her, a lot of the preparation and planning, and Betty still did it. You know, she still carried on. She still felt uh -huh. responsible. For Betty Santoki, the importance of ON is being part of something bigger than herself. She aspires to help people learn the language and also about their culture giving them a bigger sense of self through teaching about the Japanese culture. This is Drake De La Cruz from Franklin High School for Hiki No. We're back in the town of Makua at the Montessori School of Maui. Our school has a garden with a compost program that generates high quality compost from raw materials collected in classrooms and the environment. This program gives us the opportunity to learn about how compost is made and how it is used. Middle school students built multiple wooden bins where the compost is cultivated. We'll use the compost produced in our garden to help sustain the plants. We will also sell it as merchandise in our co store for students and parents. For our final story, we'll stay here on the island of Maui and delve into the thoughts of an HP Baldwin high school student who wonders if great things can actually find their start in the quiet suburb where she lives. I grew up in the same house in the same small, confined neighborhood my entire life, with an imagination that drove me to believe I could be anything I wanted to be. But having big dreams in such a small place felt completely out of reach because I didn't feel like the place I was living in was significant enough for big dreamers to succeed from. And somehow maybe I would travel far away to a place where dreams came true. But I was stuck. Though I did create my own fun, because I still enjoyed the memories I made with the people I loved. My younger self always thought that my neighborhood would never change. That my friends and I would be in our own little world forever. We used to ride our bikes along familiar pathways, but pretended we were on a new adventure every day. But now, 
I sit at my desk struggling to complete my homework because I'm staring out of my window thinking about how euphoric my childhood was. One of the best moments from when I was a kid was when I got a dog. Dogs see life through a different perspective than humans. They see the choices we make and not how we reflect on them. And my dog Avalon always sees the best in me. She gave me a new perspective, one through a lens. I started taking pictures of her and showing them on social media. Over time, it became a hobby. And eventually, when I was 12, my dad got me my first camera. From then on, I discovered I wanted to work with cameras for the rest of my life. I ended up venturing into the world of cinematography and filmmaking, where I could tell my stories. When I was younger, I used to write my own scripts and film terrible videos with my friends using my old computer. But I never thought anything of it. Because at that time, working in the film industry was a fantasy. Only the lucky ones could live in it. That doesn't matter anymore. I want to live in that world too. Because we're all stories at the end of the day, and someone needs to tell it. Even if it's told by some nostalgic girl sitting at her desk in her same old house in the same small, confined neighborhood. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Kikino. Remember, all these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope that you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii's young people, Kikino, can do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki No. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no.